Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today on our Advent journey as we explore this theme of making space at the table, making space for Jesus to be present and part of our lives. So today's passage is taken from the book of Luke. We're looking at the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, this is a really, you know, well-known parable and I'm sure most of you uh, know it, but I'm just going to summarise it in a few sentences. So in this parable, we read that there is a son who decides to take his share of his inheritance and uh, decides to live life the way he likes it. So he leaves home to journey, um, journey by himself to, you know, do life his way. And on this journey, he actually spends all his money on crazy things and bad things, things that aren't good for him. And in the end, he loses all his money. Uh, he has no place to go and he has no one to turn to. So he decides to get a job and he ends up working in a field as uh, someone who feeds uh, pigs. That was his job. And during this period, he comes to the realisation that actually life back at home wasn't that bad. Life back at home was much better than what he was doing now. So he decides to go back home, go back to his father, go back to the lifestyle he had before. He went all crazy. <laughs> so on his journey back home, he's finding ways to articulate how sorry he is to his father. He's preparing answers and responses. But this is where an the most amazing thing happens. His father actually notices him from a distance and his father jumps for joy and runs after his, runs towards his son and gives him a huge hug and a kiss. And the son says, I'm sorry for what I've done. But this is another amazing thing. The father, instead of, um, responding he actually uh, decides to throw the son a big feast he calls his servants to bring the son a robe and to bring him a ring and sandals and asks the servants to prepare a huge banquet meal for his son because for the father he knew that the best way to actually respond to this situation to resolve this situation would be to welcome his son back home with a huge party now i'm gonna stop the story there uh, i'm sure most of us know what happens next but i want to focus on this part of the story because actually this part of the story is a reflection um of our Christian lives. It's actually the reality um, of the Christian life. So how do we actually apply this story um, to our lives right now? Why is it a reflection of our Christian lives? Well, the son, the prodigal son in this story was someone who took things into his own hands, who decided to do crazy things, things that weren't good to him, were good for him without realising uh, the consequences. He was an abuser of grace. We are like the prodigal son. We are also prodigal sons and daughters. We also take things into our own hands. We decide what is good for us and we decide what is bad for us. We decide to do things that aren't good for us and end up facing really bad consequences because of it. We also are abusers of God's gift of grace, of God's good gift of grace. So we are the prodigal son and God is a father and we, like the son, abuse grace, God's grace. But the amazing thing is, like, like the son, when the son realised he was doing wrong, we also come to our senses, don't we? We also realise, actually, life 
without God is rubbish and we realise that we want to go back to God. So we decide to run back to God, we run back to grace. And the amazing thing is, when we run back with this heart of repentance, with this heart of realisation like the prodigal son did, God also welcomes us home, into his home. He welcomes us home, he embraces us with a hug and a kiss. He, he continues to show his grace towards us. He, help, he gives us the best clothes, he gives us the best food and drink and he celebrates the fact that we've come back home to him because we've realised that actually we can't do, we can't achieve much on our own. We can't enjoy life to the full extent on our own but with God, we can, that all our enjoyment, all our satisfaction is actually in God. And when we realise that God welcomes us back in, he makes space for us at his table. And that's just a reflection of our Christian lives, that we always fall like the prodigal son, but with a true heart of repentance and of realisation, when we approach the throne of God, he welcomes us back in with unconditional love, with mercy, with his grace. So how does this story actually apply to, apply to us right now during this period of Advent? How do we, how do we connect Advent and uh, this parable together? Well, this gift of grace and forgiveness and mercy um, came about because of the life of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus came to the world, when he died, when he lived and died and did what he did, when he suffered on that cross, he made a way for us uh, to come back again to our Father. Grace is a, a result of Jesus' death on the cross. Grace is what came about when Jesus decided to sacrifice his life for us. And you know, without his grace, without God's son's sacrificial offering, we won't be able to run back to God. So during this period, over the next couple of weeks, let us prepare um, ourselves to welcome the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth to die for us, making it possible for us to run back into the arms of God so that we can dine and celebrate with our Father in heaven. God bless.